have a proof that you know the time exponentiation is required and it'll just be you know so and so's theorem and this was open for 200 years but uh, but now it's an exercise you know in in your homework um, that's how things go okay so let's go back to this picture we have the potential to build this tree as deep as we want. We can make any piece of it we want at any time. We want to know if we can get from this configuration to an accepting configuration, any one. And we don't want to use as much space as actually generating a whole path. We don't ever want to hold a whole path from here to the bottom. That's way too much. Now, each configuration we store is going to take S of n symbols. So how many configurations can we conceivably store? And still get away with this theorem? S of n. We got S of n for each configuration, and S of n configurations we have room to store. That gives us S squared n. S of n times S of n. So how can we go ahead, and this is, go away from the abstraction of a Turing machine, just this picture. You can generate this picture as big as you want. I'm giving you the initial configuration. You got that. I'll give it a name. It's called I0, the initial configuration. Okay. And you get all the time you want. We're only measuring space here. So take all the time you want. Tell me, is there a way to get from I0 to any of the final configurations? Which I'll number, um, I'll just give them names. We'll call them I, F0, I, F1. These are final configurations that accept, accepting configurations. There might be, so they say there's three of them. Is there any way to get from here to here? You're given a description of exactly what configurations this can go to. Description of how to build this tree. And I want to know, can I get from here to here? You have all the time in the world you want, but don't store too many things. So right now I've stored four things. That's not so bad. Maybe I shouldn't even store four. Why don't I just do these one at a time? Now I've only stored two things. If I can't get from here to here, I'll try the next final configuration. I can use all the time I want, so why not just store as little as possible and then use the time to, to do it. So I'll take any final configuration and I'm going to try to get from here to here. How do I do it? So just going through this tree and looking for a path from here to here is too much space. All right, so I'll give you a hint, which will give you the idea that, that Savage came up with, and then we'll talk about his idea in detail, and I'll write down the little algorithm. But the hint is that trying to find out whether there's a path from the node that represents this configuration to the node that represents this configuration, when you're given a way to generate the next stages in the path, that's like a linear search. That's like, I'm searching for something from here to here, and I'm going to look through the whole path and store it as I go. Right? So if you want to cut that down, what's the normal way to cut down linear search? Is to do like a binary search. But there needs to be some ordering to do a binary search. And we'll get to that in just a second. But let's say we did cut this down to a binary search. Let's see if that actually works, because then we have a goal. If we want to see whether we can get from here to here and we do it in a binary search, then first we store, say, something in between that's going to be halfway, that takes half the number of steps and then half the number of steps from there again to get to the end. We'll call that the middle configuration. So now I've got three things stored. What do I do next? What if I find a middle one here? Middle, middle. And then maybe a middle one here and a middle one here. Sooner or later, these configurations are going to be one apart. OK? How many configurations would I store until they became one apart if I just keep having this first interval? I have it, I have it, I have it, I have it, and sooner or later, I get an interval that's just one apart. If I had 64 to begin with, and I halved it all the time until I got something with one, I would have six different stages, right? I'd have the log base two of this. But what did I really start with? What's the real distance between I0 and IF0? It's not 64, it's really... It's really this. So if I manage to do my search in a way that I only store half points, then I can cut it down to the log base 2 of this. 
And the log base 2 of this is going to be what? More or less. Say the k was a 2. It makes it easier. The log base 2 of this is going to be S of n times log of S of n, right? Not times, S of n plus log of S of n, right? Because when you take logs of things and they're multiplied, they end up being added. And when you take logs of things and they're exponentiated, they end up getting multiplied. So S of n log 2 of k, which is a constant, plus log S of n. And that's S of n, more or less. So we'd have only S of n different configurations stored, and that's what we're hoping to do. So that's our goal. Our goal is to kind of do this in a binary search kind of a way. And it's not going to be so tough to do it. We just have to be a little imaginative. So let me stop for a second. We started out that here's the initial configuration, here's the final configuration we're hoping to get to. Right, Gary? And how far are they apart in the worst case? They're this far apart. They're an exponential number of steps apart in, in S of n. So what I'm hoping to do is cut that exponentiation down to just s of n. And the way we're going to do it is hopefully find the middle part, find the next middle, find the next middle. And if we can only, if we can figure out a path from here to here and only store middle parts, then we don't actually ever have to hold the whole path in memory at any time. What's a good way to explain this that isn't... What's that? And the binary search would convert one of your S of n orders into a log. Yeah, it's, it's order take, take the log of this. That's what's happening. So you get the log of q. That's a constant. The log base 2 of k to the S of n. That's S of n times the log base 2 of k. So that's a constant times S of n. And then log plus log base 2 of S of n. So, so the overwhelming factor there is the S of n factor. So that's how many configurations we actually get. Yeah. How do you know that you're halfway? Oh, we haven't, I haven't talked about how we're going to do this. I'm just trying to motivate it a little bit. I'm trying to say that if we figure out a way to store halfway points, then we're there. So now let's try to go through the vague door that's opening for us and see if we can you know, blow away the mist and make it work. But we've got to have a sense of where we're headed instead of just kind of Flailing around. So before I actually write the algorithm down, I'm thinking maybe I can come up with another way of thinking about this that might be clearer for you. Uh, OK, I got away. It's just the same thing, but maybe this will help you think about it. Let's say that, that somebody gives you a book. And in this book is a description of, of a big cave and a description of the passages in the cave. And on page one is the entry passage, and that's called I0. And there's also a room at the end that has gold in it called I gold. That's the final configuration. And you're supposed to figure out whether there's a path from the entryway to the gold. Because this cave is complicated, and maybe there's a way to get there, and maybe there's not. Now, what the book describes to you is you can turn to any page. Every page has a configuration on it with a list of other configurations that you can get to. So if you turn to the page with I0 on it, there'll be just a list of other pages in the book. I3, I8, I15, and you can go turn there and see that you can get there. Everyone understand so far? And then if you're on page I15, it'll tell you that you can get to page I-26 and page I-355. You have this book, and you've got to figure out a way if there's a way to get from I-0 to I-gold. And you've got a piece of paper in your hand, and you're not allowed to write down too many things. That's exactly what this problem is about, but now it's a little more concrete. Or maybe less so. I mean, it's really the same thing, but I think it might be easier to think of it this way. You've got all the time in the world you want. You can thumb through the pages as often as you want. You can backtrack. You can look at them again and again. Go wild with the exponential time. That's OK, but you cannot write down too many things. Does that help a little? Maybe? Gary? Maybe? Yeah? All right. 